certain fall mornings, it's possible to walk 18th from 10th to 1st into a white sun blinding the tunneled street. From within that obliterating light come shades, figures loading and unloading cargo, holding briefcases or babies, leaning on fire trucks. The hints of two seasons cross in the air as, on either end of the extreme school year, shuffling curious September or restless June, the humid New York heat will descend on classrooms where even under high ceilings the thick air becomes torture. Onto the old half-varnished seats, little legs pour moisture through the clean wool plaid of new school clothes, thinking New Year's, thinking Columbus Day, thinking Thanksgiving, or through cotton sundresses waiting for hydrants and hoses and pools, and the teacher, despairing, shuts the lights for an illusion of coolness. In the gift of half dark, children rest their heads on desks. Some brood, some notice the vegetable smell of soft old wood. They all begin thumbs up, heads down, fists closed, thumbs up. One child wanders the room to touch a random waiting thumb, whose owner may go down the hall to the water fountain, return, and touch another. And so through slow and slower time, all thumbs, all mouths are touched, each knowing the approach of the next subtly through that dark flow each growing up into the shuffle of new mornings, gnarled with purpose, out on the streets, watching the world's business emerge from the shadows, come into relief, stop, caught, go past, and be finally as brilliant, seen backward as Plato taught. I started writing poetry when I was very little, although I always knew I wanted to be a scientist and I studied science and I continued to study science in college and somewhere in the middle of college I realized I was not cut out to be a scientist and it took me a long long time to search and discover that I wanted to be a writer and I switched to the English department and then told everybody about my shocking new change and everyone said oh yeah they knew it all along and when I think back about it I realized that I have journals from when I was in second grade and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote um, so I came to realize I wanted to be a writer much later than I actually was a writer because I think writers write and I always wrote putting words together and patching them together is the most wonderful project. It's the most exciting thing to be doing, to play word, from word to word to word. And I, I always kept lists of strange words. Um, often a word is what starts a poem. Often hearing a funny word that I'd never heard before, hearing a word used in a funny way, is what's the kernel of a new poem for me. And um, so I think that that's, I've always liked the, the smallest possible thing, sometimes even just the syllable and the funniness of the way a syllable can sound is often what starts me. Form is very important to me and although I don't write all my poems in traditional forms, uh, it's the among the earliest considerations, even in draft, what I'm, how I'm going to structure the poem, what kinds of line forms I'm going to use, and what kinds of stanza or not stanza forms. So that's a kind of con a question of form that goes across and then the form that goes down, meaning what kinds of meters will I use in the line across, or what kinds of stanza forms will I use? Am I going to use rhyme to patch the poem together or not? And I think about that a lot, and um, sometimes I mean, I'm on a, a run and I'm doing a lot in one form, and so I just continue to see how far I could take that. And sometimes I just say, let me try something else. When I encounter a new poem, I can, I can hear whether it's written in a meter uh, pretty quickly, and then if it is, then I, then I understand to some degree the background of the poem, where the poem wants to place itself, or the, where the poet has placed the poem, because one of the wonderful things about writing in form is that you are 
you're involving yourself in a dialogue across the centuries. When you write a poem in a form, the form is an answer to every other version of that form that's ever been used. So when you're writing a poem in a sonnet, which is among the oldest forms that English poets use, you've stuck yourself in the middle of a really long dialogue um, with all the greats. And you, so you've sort of actually put yourself in a boxing ring with some of the, the best poets. And I think that those choices, therefore, are very, very conscious. When you read a contemporary sonnet, you know that you're also thinking about some great Yeats sonnets or going further back, of course, Wordsworth and Milton and Shakespeare, and then even back and back into Dante. So that's one of the wonderful things about form is that it puts you in a, in a dialogue with poets who you obviously otherwise are not in a literal dialogue with. And the other thing about form is that it allows uh, for a certain kind of compositional freedom. Uh, which may sound paradoxical if you're thinking about counting lines or counting beats. Uh, you may feel like you're constrained. Uh, there's a famous Wordsworth sonnet about what form means in which he says that nuns fret not in their convent walls and that when you've chosen this form, it does not feel like a constraint and in fact is a kind of a liberation because you've closed out other concerns and you can go forward into some more basic questions in the, in the poem. What are they? The questions I have are, I want to make sure I s use words in as new a way as possible and in as precise a way as possible. And when I'm tr busy counting up meter or beats for a line, my mind, my conscious censoring mind is, fr is gone. And I'm much more free to think and say crazy things. I mean, to put it more crudely, when I have to find a damn I am, I'll be willing to say anything if it's an I am. And sometimes the crazy, crazier things will come out uh, from, th from the back of my mind. Whereas if I set out to express myself or, s or make a point or say something specifically, uh, I'm basically writing sort of the worst kind of um, marketing material. And I'm trying to market an idea, market an emotion, and I'll just say an ordinary cliché and I'll let myself do that. But if I pay more attention to the, the mechanics, the, the, the materials with which I'm working, then the ideas come in a, in a much more um, true way. Certainly. Certainly. And um, I would defy those people who say otherwise. Um, to prove themselves uh, along the t even along the terms that um, we're talking about, because no matter how free a form one uses, uh, you're st one is still working in in with with words, and words are symbolic of feeling. They are not the feeling. Words words are words can only represent feeling. They aren't the feeling. So by the time you take you go from your feeling to getting the word on the page. It doesn't matter whether you're doing it in a very strict line or doing it in a sort of wild, all over the place kind of thing. You've now gone from the actual event to the symbolic representation of the, the event. Um, even if it's virtually instantaneous, it's only virtually and not exactly. First of all, free verse has tremendous constraints on it. It's um, it's, it's free um, in the sense that it, the counting is, uh, is, is unpredictable to the reader. The counting systems, whatever they are, it, are unpredictable to the reader who can't guess whether this line is going to be long or short at any one moment. But it's not free in the sense that it's um, unstructured or unorganized. Uh, poetry, even free verse, is a very organized set of symbols. And these are symbols. They're not feeling. They're not the event. They're not the thing. So even those people who simply, I say simply, obviously, in a denigrating sense, even those people who write emotional poetry about their emotion, who use poetry to represent their emotions and not investigate them or analyze them, are not writing their emotions. They're writing words about their emotions. craft will help you be creative and creativity will work on your craft because no craft is um, 
cookie cutter, uh, Pound said that art, all art, is a constant and a variable. And so you always have the constant work that you work from, but you always change. Something has to change all the time or else you get a very boring set of lines that nobody wants to hear. So uh, one must be creative with the craft, and uh, the craft uh, is the only way that you can express your creativity. So they're, 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 they're I don't know if you call them terrible, a terrible couple or they're a necessary couple, but they're really almost the same thing. In order to be a poet, you need to love words. You need to love the words of your own language. That's what you need most of all. Thank you.